Innal hamdulillah Alhamdulillahi nahmuduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa nashhadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana wa habibina wa shafiyyana wa rasulana wa maulana Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam amma ba'd qala Allah tabaarak fi kitabihi al-aziz a'udhu billahi minash shaitonir rajeem ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqullaha alladhi tus'aluna bihi wal arham Inna Allah kana alaykum rakiba Ya ayyuhan nasu tuku Ya ayyuhal Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu tuku Allah wa kulu kawlan sadida Yuslih lakum amalakum wa yagfir lakum dhunubakum Wa man yuti Allah wa rasuluhu fakad faza fawzan azima Alhamdulillah All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Him do we praise and Him do we beseech forgiveness for the sins of our souls. It is Allah who has guided us aright. Hence we are here and we praise Him and we thank Him and we glorify Him. I bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's bondman and His messenger. Allah says in the glorious Quran, chapter 3, verse 1 or 2 onwards, Surah Al-Imran, the family of Al-Imran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah says, O you who believe, Allah is speaking to the believers. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not save in a state of Al-Islam. In a state of belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the crux of our, our faith, our deen. But Allah says, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. You see how Allah puts it? It's not a fear that you should tremble when you hear that word fear. But fear Allah as it should be feared. That is a fear that is akin to love. You fear Allah because he talks about his punishment. But you love Allah because what he has promised you in the Akhirah. It's a fear that is akin to love. And I've given this example very often as a parent and a child. If you ask that child if he does wrong, who you think will punish me? And I'll be fearful of him, my mom or my dad. But if you ask that toddler, that child, who do you love the most in this world? He will say, my mom and my dad. That's the kind of love, that's the kind of fear we must have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we must love him at the same time. Because he has promised punishment on us, but he has promised a great reward as well. And he has identified where that punishment comes from and where that reward will come from. Then he says, فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِيَامَتِهِ أَقْوَانَ وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاهُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ 
فَأَنْكَزَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْقَزَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ مَا يَأْتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ He says, and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out for you. And be not divided among yourselves. What is that rope that Allah stretches for you and I? And hold fast all together, not be separated. That rope is the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivered his farewell sermon, he said to the people, I am leaving with you two things, which if you adhere to, you will never go astray. The negative of this is that if you do not adhere to this, it means you have gone astray. And that is the Quran and my examples. If you follow this, Allah says, you will be successful. Then he says, And remember with gratitude Allah's favor on you, for you were enemies and he joined your hearts in one. He joined your hearts in one, in love, so that by, by His grace you became brethren. And you were on the brink of a pit of fire, ready to topple over. And Allah saved you from it. Thus that Allah may clear His signs to us, that you may be guided. Allah is talking about those people who were divided, tribal warfare. When Muhammad Sallallahu migrated from Makkah to Medina, the people there were united behind him. He established brotherhood one towards the other. He selected, you be his brother, and you be his brother. And the tribal feud in Yatrib disappeared. It, be, it, it was called the city of par excellence, Medina. Wallahi, if you go to that city, you feel that brotherhood feeling. You feel that atmosphere. This, and this is a good example we have in this masjid. I came to PLN about eight years ago. And I've seen almost Muslims from almost every part of the world in this little masjid here. And we all love each other. There's no differentiation whether you're Mexican or whether you're Middle Eastern, or whether you're Pakistani, or Trinidadian like I am, or you're black, or white, or Indian, or whatever. This is a good example. Allah says he joined their hearts in one. This is the unification of this brotherhood, this deen of Islam. The believers are but a single brotherhood. Then he says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّتُ يَدُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَا لِلْمُنْكَرْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِهُونَ He says, let there arise from among you a group of people inviting people to goodness and joining on yourself what is right and then inviting to goodness forbidding what is wrong forbidding first yourself from doing wrong they are the ones to attain felicity they are the ones to attain fala they are the ones to attain the, the desires in the hereafter they are the ones to attain happiness. They will be the ones to attain freedom, freedom from the fire of hell. They are the ones who will be prosperous in the life to come. This is what Allah is talking about. But he says, let there arise from among you a group of people. Here we have a commitment as Muslims to learn about Islam. If I do not know about Islam, how can I arise to inform the people? What do I tell them? 
So here knowledge is compulsory upon us. Let there arise from among you a group of people. Some from among us got to be knowledgeable. Inviting to goodness. First you imply good on yourself. You behave that way. You behave good generally. This is the only way you can invite by example. Like the Prophet ﷺ. He invited people by example. He was the kindest of personality. The last quote by gave Allah says, He will ease his way. He was the easiest of person to his wives. He was the most pleasurable man to his children. He will wear the simplest of clothing. He will eat whatever was prepared for him. He, can, he could have lived like a king, but he lived like a poor person. He slept on nice, decent mattresses, but he also slept on the bare floor. He made life very simple. Allah says, we are committed to do this. Let there arise from among us a group of people. From among us, some from among us are committed to learn about Islam and to teach it and preach it. Inviting to goodness and forbidding wrong. And Allah has promised they are the ones with attain felicity. And they say, the hadith of the Prophet says, one intelligent Muslim is better than a thousand ignorant Muslims. By this we understand that we are committed to seek knowledge. Then it says, Be not like those who are divided among themselves and fall into disputation after receiving clear signs. For them is a dreadful penalty. They all before us promise to accept this deen of all Islam. Promise to accept the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you look into Surah Al Bayyana, they made promise, and when that messenger come, they disavow him. They didn't recognize him. They were expecting someone from among themselves. It says, on a day when some faces will be lit up white. If you look at the translation of the English, it says some faces will be white and some faces will be black. But this is not a good interpretation. Because you can see a black person and his face can be brilliant and bright. And you can see a white person and his face can be doom and gloom. And vice versa. On, the, on a day when some faces will be lit up bright and some faces will be in the gloom of darkness, those whose faces will be gloom, in the gloom of darkness, it will be said to them, Did you reject faith after accepting it? Then taste, the, taste ye then the penalty of the fire of Jahannam. These are the people who accepted faith and then they rejected it. Wallahi, there is a dua that you should make every day. Rabbana la tuzikulubana. Bada is hadaytana wa hablana miladunka rahma inna ka antal wahab. Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate from this part, this deen of Islam, after we have received this guidance. And grant us mercy from thine own presence, for thou art the grant of mercy. Allah is the grant of bounty, without measure, to whomever he pleases. But those whose faces will be lit up bright, they will be in the light of Allah's mercy to dwell therein forever. They are, these are signs from Allah. We rehearse them in truth. And Allah means no injustice to his creatures. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And all questions go back to him. My brothers and sisters, the point of this khutbah is the unification of the Muslims. Let us not come from different countries and think that the, the one from another country is smaller than us in any way. We must be united under this banner of Islam. 
This will make us unique. This is the reason for the establishment of the Juma, the unification of the Muslims. This is a, a replica of the bigger establishment of the unification of Hajj, where you have an international gathering. And ultimately, this will be the unification of the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, when all of mankind will be assembled on that day. And Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ كَرَّ يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَهُ And every atom weight of good you do, you shall see it. And every atom weight of evil you do, you shall see it on that day. Allah will be the fairest of judges. There's no one can bribe Allah on that day. So don't ask your wives to bury you with the checkbook in your pockets. It won't help. He will be the fairest of judges on that day, and every need, every good deed will be, go, will be rewarded. And every evil deed will be acknowledged and exposed. And autumn weight, and autumn weight is, we used to say in our countries that, mm, something very small. You cannot see it with the naked eye. Maybe you can if you see the ray of the sun and you see a particle of dust. That is what an autumn weight. Something that you could barely weigh. It's, it's not even weighable. And even up to this small, Allah will recognize and you'll be rewarded or you'll be punished accordingly. And what's the reward? The reward, Allah says in the Quran, He says, no one, none of us share. No one knows what delights of the eyes are kept hidden for us in reserve in that Jannah for the good deeds that we do in this world. That's why Allah is asking us to preach the goodness. Abstain from evil, do good, and encourage others to do good. Let the kuntum kaira ummatun ukrijatul nas. You are the best of people. Evolve to guide the destiny of mankind. Allah says, and this is further down in the same verses. Kuntum kaira ummatun ukrijatul nas. You, the Muslims, Allah saying, we are the best of people, evolve in this universe to guide the destiny of mankind. Do you think you and I own that status that Allah has put us in? Perhaps the Sahabas, the Tabayin, and the Taba did own that status. When Muhammad Sallallahu left Mecca to go to Medina, those people who went with him, they left everything they had, and they joined that bandwagon. They left their families, their properties, their animals, everything that they had to join Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these were the Muhajirin. And when he went to Medina, the Ansars, these are all helpers, welcomed him. And this is where he established that universal brotherhood in Islam. This is the example we must follow. We must try now to fulfill that gap that we have allowed and be the ones, the leaders. We are no longer leaders, we are followers. I give you some typical example. Now when we have the birthday party, we have the piñata. Is that anything about anything in Islam? If you see a marriage, you see the bride comes, and you see a trail of other people coming, ring bearers, and this is not Islam. This was never established in Islam. We are not following anymore. We are not following the example set by Muhammad Sallallahu the best of examples. We are now following the Kuffar. 
We are no longer taking that role, that leadership role. We are now giving up that leadership role and we are now followers. Allah says, you and I are the best of people to guide the destiny of the whole of mankind. Inviting people to goodness, forbidding them from wrong. The translation reads like this. You are the best of people evolved to guide the destiny of enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that's what makes the difference. There are many who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they do more good than you and I. And they abstain from evil more than you and I. But the difference is that they do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their reward is in this world. They have nothing to attain in the hereafter because they do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Luqman gave instruction to his son, he said, Ya Bunayya, O oh my beloved son, join not in worship others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for false worship is the highest of wrongdoing. You cannot do a greater wrong than to associate a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah help us and guide us to understand the deen of Islam, understand our role as Muslims. We are the leaders of this universe. Let us assume that leadership role and to play our rightful place. Akulu kawli haza fasuli wa lakum lahsan muslimin min kulli zam fastaqru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. I said what I've said and I seek Allah's forgiveness for you and for myself. Hence you too seek his forgiveness for his off returning in grace and mercy. Astaghfirullah. Inna alhamdulillah hamdan kathiran tayyiban barakan fi. I just want to make a few remarks, and that is, recently I know Brother Yusuf stood here many times and appealed to you to make dua, maybe some from among us pious more than us, our dua will be answered. This, my brothers and sisters, is needed. As I said, I've been in this community, in that small masjid, about eight years now. And I've seen from a small group of people we have grown, we need to learn more about Islam. We need to teach what, whatever we know, not necessarily Islamic knowledge, but if we know a trade, if we in the medical field, like it was established recently, that some in the medical field gave instructions how to avoid illnesses, play your part in whatever way you can. Brother Yusuf is kind of emphasizing this. I understand where he's coming from. He is long in age right now, not, not too old, but he's there. He is facing some illnesses as well. But let us grasp this opportunity. The hadith of Rasulullah says, value five things before five. There's five important things that you should value before five other things. The first is your youth before you become old. While you're here now and you're youthful and vibrant, Exuberant, make use of that youth. Get involved in, in the affairs of the masjid. Less you will get old and then you won't be able to be too active. So that's the advice of Muhammad Sallam. Value your youth before you become old. Value your health before you become sick. This is very important. You are healthy. You can do a lot right now, make use of that help. In the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, play that leadership role that you're designated, that Allah has designed for you as a believer before that time may come when you get ill. 
The third, you have free time, leisure time. You have your jobs, but beside the job you have some free time in between. Do not waste that time. Do not do like the guy who said, I'm killing time. Time will kill you, you cannot kill time. So while you have that le leisure time, that free time, occupy that time. Glorify your Lord. Be part and parcel of the community. Get involved in whatever way you can. So value that leisure time as against the occupied time that you will have. And, and you finally, no, I think uh, that's three, and your wealth before you may lose that wealth. Utilize that wealth. Of course, you are committed first of all to yourself and your family and your, maybe your extended family and your commitment to the needs of the people. And then you extend that wealth in whatever way you can to assist the entire community like you have done for the masjid. But continue. That wealth may lose you. I can give you many examples of wealthy people. They go to sleep with the wealth and by morning that disappeared. They disappeared completely. And value your life. Value the life that Allah has given you before that time comes. Worship your Lord. Pray on, on less and until that time where prayer will be said on you. When we put your body, our bodies, in front and we line up and we make the funeral prayer, the janazah prayer. Absorb your prayer. Utilize your life usefully before that life comes to an end. Inna Allah wa malaikati salluna ala nabi Ya ayuha al-lazina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka habidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka habidu majid ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد إسهابنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب زدنا علما رب ارحمهما كما رب ياني سجيرا ربنا لا تعقذنا إن نسينا أو قطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تعقد لنا به وعفونا وكفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكيم السلام